How did you jump into insurance with no insurance experience? And some people think it's more about the insurance experience. Obviously, it's not. What was so special about you that you could jump into our industry and pull off $85,000 in premium in your first six weeks? Most people don't do that in, in, in six months, let alone six years. Most people are failing. You don't even know how to spell insurance. You still have probably very little product knowledge compared to most people, and you do 85K in six weeks. Well, I, I'm the dumbest insurance guy I ever meet, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I, I know very little <clears throat> about the insurance industry. And I'm not saying I got my license. I'm licensed to sell it. I understand yeah. what a term product is and the difference between that and the whole life. I mean, I, I get the basics. Start. That's a good start. But other than that, I'm, I'm probably the dumbest in um, insurance guy you're going to meet, you know, <laughs> I was, I was talking to your, your, your sales team, you know, about that this morning. Yeah. You know, I, I always say I'm, I'm a, a 20 year overnight success, <clears throat> you know? Um, and it was just the foundation I was able to build. Yeah. Um, and, and the understanding of, of people. And, um, it was so exciting. I got to reconnect with my mentor here recently and it was, you know, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, I'm not going to force any beliefs on you, but um, I had a chance to reconnect with him and go have lunch with him. And uh, he lives a mile down from my street. Mm. <laughs> I live here in a gated community and he lives in the, I'm, I'm like in a mini gated community. You've been to the house. That's the mini one com it's, compared to in Frisco though. where his ad's right by the Dallas Star and he lives in Starwood with all the, you know, elite athletes and the big ballers and the money makers and he's doing phenomenal. Um, and just to reconnect with him, it was like, you know, I left that meeting and we had an hour, we had an hour lunch that we had. And I think it was like three and a half, four hours of us talking. And just, I just like felt another higher level. And I'm like, oh, I got more stuff I want, you know, to, to get, to get from him and, and get a chance. And he's so busy. And I, I we went to the country club the next day and he's the member. I mean, here's my mentor, right? He met when I was broke and I was, <laughs> you know, literally jumping from one couch to another friend's couch and, and then have somewhere to live. And we got my car repoed and, you know, and, and, um, we're going to lunch at the country club. He's the same member of the same country club I'm a member of down the road. And, mm. you know, and you, since you brought it up and you love to talk, I mean, if you go to my Facebook, my McLaren's not there. My house isn't on there. I don't no, think, it's you know, not. no offense. I don't need people to tell me that I have a beautiful house, a beautiful wife, beautiful car to make myself feel good about myself. Cause that was another thing he taught me is don't let, don't let your stuff define you. Right. Because mm -hmm. I watched him um, because of some things that happened where the, the, there was, he lost a lot of his stuff at one point in his life because of some people that he trained that did some things that they shouldn't have done. And, and, and he lost a lot of stuff. And he, he – no big deal. I remember asking him, like, man, like that would crush me. Mm -hmm. There's no big deal. It's just stuff. You know, never seen a hearse pull in a U-Haul. <laughs> oh you, you, you can always buy it back, That's right? You can always buy it back. That's right. And, you know, and you're not going to want it in eight or nine years anyway. He's like, you ever go on a good vacation? I'm like, uh, no. He's like, you ever been to like a really nice vacation? I'm at the time I was like, no. Now the insurance industry, you right. know, they 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 you know try to outdo each other. We've been to you know the Ritz Carlton and Kauai and the Ritz Carlton in Maui and we went to the Ritz Carlton Reserve in Puerto Rico and been to Ireland and London and Rome and Italy and you know Estonia and Russia and Finland. I mean, I don't know. I can't count how many vacations we've been on because of this incredible industry and the, and the carriers and what they, they they do to take care of us. Right. <clears throat> but he's like, oh, you ever been on a good vacation? I said, no. He's like, you know, you get there, you know, he starts describing his vacation. It seems like, you know, it's like, and then I went on one, one time where we had a button. You pushed a button. We had the Ritz Carlton Reserve in Puerto Rico and they had a button where you pushed it and your butler would come running wherever, wherever you're at. You carried a button around with you. That was cool. Right. That I think some cool. people abused it. I felt bad though. Like, cause I kind of felt bad. Like I'm like, yeah. You know, I get out of the car and like, they're like, oh, take this. I'm like, I carry my luggage where I go still. I'm, I'm the same dude that was, a, I waited tables. You know, I'm the same dude that was a college draft out of the waited tables. It's like, I got my bag. Even you try to grab my bag. I got it. I always feel weird. Like, you know. No, I, but I, I didn't give it back though. <laughs> I know you didn't give it back, but I'm like, I I'm like, no, like, dude, I got this. It's almost weird when you go on these vacations and they just like slobber all over you, right? Yeah. Um, but he said, you ever go on a vacation and, and, you know, you have the nicest room and you have a butler taking care of you and you're, you know, right on the beach and, and mm. you know, you're, you're in this, this room that costs you $5,000 a night. And I'm like, oh, no. He's like, would it be, so when you're done that vacation and you get on the airplane, you're going home. Are you like in tears, crying? Oh my gosh, I don't have my thing. Or are you just thinking about all the wonderful things you got to experience? And what are you just talking about when you get home? What are you talking about? Yeah, all the positive. All the positive stuff. Yeah. Because so, that's life, dude. 
That's life. You know, that's your stuff. You it's on rent. You don't have to keep it. And so, like, that was another critical point. I never fell in love. Do I like nice stuff? Of course I like nice stuff. Yeah, Do I yeah. want to lose my nice stuff? Of course I don't want to lose my nice stuff. But I never really fell in love with it. And when, you know, when you don't fall in love with your stuff, you are you have the ability to take risk without worry. Because you're not in love with your stuff, right? So here I am. I, I got involved in credit card processing. And I made millions of dollars in credit card processing uh, based on the stuff that I learned from my mentor. And, <clears throat> you know, that... Some things happened where I had to walk away from that, you know, and I had a, a you know, $20,000 a month lifestyle with a $40,000 a month income I wasn't making anymore. Mm. And I uh, was trying to build another business and I thought, well, maybe the network marketing industry has changed. I tried to get back into that and I was doing well, but I wasn't, I just wasn't really in love with it again. I was just like, oh, yeah. no, I don't want to go back here. And I actually called uh, two individuals, Matt and Brad Smith with the company and I attempted to recruit them in to the company I was doing and they flipped the script. Mm. So here they are and I'm like going, so what are you guys doing, man? He's like, he's like, you guys see what we're doing. I'm like, what are you doing? Right? And they go, we're selling insurance. You're like, mortgage protection. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 it was bad. Like I had a little bit, you know, you got I worked up in my life where I had three assistants. I was, I wasn't married at the time. I was 38 years old. I've lived in the bachelor life with the, you know, home theater room in the basement with a 120 inch screen, you know, projector and flat screens all around. And I'd be, you know, so here I am we're getting up, at, you know, starting work at 10 a.m., getting done at four, all nights and weekends free, right? Wow. That's what I was used to. Oh, yeah. That's what I was used to, making a great income. And you don't have a family. I mean, that's you're, you're living like a king, especially I was totally. in Ohio back then. I what mean, kind like, of money? Uh, I was making $40,000 $40, a month, $34,000 a month. This is before insurance. That was before insurance. Okay. Right. So I made millions of dollars in the industry. So they said they're selling mortgage protection. I go, Brad, is life that bad? <laughs> I was like, did really? you say that? I did say that to him. I'm surprised. <laughs> you know, Brad's such a nice guy. I'm surprised he wouldn't reach into the phone and be like, screw you. And he oh, was it over laughing. the phone? Yeah, it was over the phone. I go, is life that bad? And he starts telling me about this, that, and the other. And I'm like, man, I'm just like, I, I, that's great. I'm not interested. All right. And so then I said, but I have about 10 guys that I will um, send your way that aren't going to cut it with what I'm doing. Marlon was one of them. Mm. And I sent out a video. You heard a story to 10 of those guys. I thought of Marlon. I said, right. I know he's got it in him. Here's a chance. Send him a video. Nine out of ten came back and they said, uh, we have an interest. And I'm like, okay. I know how these pyramid deals work, right? <laughs> you know, insurance. You're like, I don't want to jump in after they do. I, yeah, I said insurance, man. That's a pyramid deal, right? It's the best one. You, uh, see, insurance is such a great pyramid deal, right? Or, that you need a license to participate in that one. That's right. right. I say that with Jess because like the uh, ignorant people say dumb stuff, right? Oh, it's a pyramid. Oh, okay, great. We can spend an hour on that one. Watch the podcast we did earlier today. I annihilate that one, right? Yeah, that's true. I annihilate that one. Yeah, they want you to start at the bottom of someone else's pyramid and try to climb the corporate ladder while someone's standing on your head. I mean, how smart is that? Fill out your resume and resume at the bottom of someone else's corporation that they busted their ass to build. And then one day, maybe, if you had the right last name or the right opportunity, you might get to move up and they pay you just enough money that you stay there and you work just hard enough that they don't fire you. I mean, yeah. what, what a great uh, corporate America, man. That's where I want to be. Absolutely. I mean, and people, they don't, I mean, my dad worked for the same company for 40 plus years. That doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Downsized, resized, restructured. I met a guy the other day I was recruiting. He said he got, no, the, he got strategically realigned. <laughs> Right into ZipRecruiter. <laughs> you lost your job, buddy, right? I got strategically, strategically realigned. realigned. That's a good one. I, that's a good one, right? You know, strategically realigned. Well, you got fired or you lost your job. He, he, who was in un, You said that, didn't you? What? I said, yeah. So you mean like you don't have a job right now? Or like what is – I said, what does strategically realign mean? But so <laughs> I call Brad. I go, how am I going to – you know, I'm at the Red Cross here, man. How am I going to get in on this little this little deal, right? I want to I I be able to, uh, you know um, – Get involved. I want to get, you know, put on top. You know, I want to make this money on these guys. I'll send you people. You pay me. He's like, well, it's a regulated industry. It really doesn't work that way. I said, what do I got to do? He's like, you need to get your insurance license. <sighs> I mean, a whole wave of school. And I hated school. I just didn't like it. I hated it. I just didn't like it. Here we go. So <laughs> I went and on, back then it was license coach. If you ever took license coach, I wanted to punch coach Jenny right in the throat because I was just so annoyed by this guy. <laughs> he makes it real easy. 20 hour course online. I'm like, oh my God. Did, did like, you pass your first time? Yeah. I got my license in four days. I failed twice. Oh, you did? Yeah. Wow. I failed twice. That makes me feel better. Dude, you're smarter than me. <laughs> no, I had the ability to memorize. And retain for a short period of time. Well, you did it for four days, so that's, that's good. That's that why, why I knew my weakness. I knew it. If I would have studied over three weeks, I would have forgot the first chapter that's three funny. Two weeks in. That's so funny. So I, I meet like, yeah, I was like, I, I had to crush this thing and do it in four days. So I got my license and I thought that was the end of it, right? 
And I'm still doing my other stuff. And Brad goes, well, can you like do a conference call for your guys? I said, about what? He's like, well, you know, you're working with your mentor and stuff that you learn and you motivate people. Because at this point in time, I had spent 10 years doing that. And I, I, I you know, had, was good at doing it. Building sales teams, built sales teams in the, in the credit card processing business. And it was great, amazing because the same stuff he taught me in network marketing made millions of dollars. I used the same stuff in the credit card processing made millions of dollars and then transformed into the, the, the insurance business and made millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. People are people. That's right. So I thought, and this is just me, and if you do this, I don't want to, to, to push anyone back there, but sure. I just don't believe in trying to teach someone to do something I haven't done. Mm. Wow. I mean, because a lot of people, right, you know. There's a lot of that going on nowadays, too, Hey, man. you know what? <laughs> we say, There's a lot of that. If you can't do it, write a book about it. Right? So there you say, go. There you go. If you can't do it, teach it. If you can't teach it, write a book about it, right? And I'm not saying That's if good. you write a book doesn't mean you can't do it. But if you are doing it and you teach or write a book, then kudos. If you haven't yeah. done it, how in the world can you teach someone to do something you haven't done? I can't. I can teach them success principles, but you can read that in any book and go to any podcast. You can listen to all sorts of success principles. But I never listened to House and MLS. If I never did this, if I never did that, like how in the world am I going to teach them to do it? So I said, Brad, I'm not going to go and try to motivate these guys to do something I never did. Yeah. And he goes, Well, why don't you just go? This is good. Yeah, he, he's good. You know the story right here. And he goes, Well, why don't you just get some leads and go into the field? I said, Because I don't want to. He's like, Unless you think you can't. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Dude, so, that's all you got to tell me too, bro. That's all you got to tell me is I can't. Ugh. I said, fine. Who's your top guy, right? I turned, he turned that, he activated my prey drive. You that's know, like right. Coach Burke that's calls right. the prey drive. He activated my prey drive. And I went, all right, who's your top guy? What are they doing, right? And so um, I got I got some leads and um, I was horrific on the phone. Well, they gave you a script though, right? Yeah, but I was horrific on the phone because I talk fast. I move fast. I'm, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm like this. Right, so I'm like, hey, how are you doing? I'm just his name calling you back. I had bonus leads. I bought three dollar leads. So you didn't leads, slow down at all leads. on the phone. I was the same as I always thought I was. <laughs> I was talking to business owners. What do they want? They went quick to the point and make it quicker. You don't have their attention. I bought seventy leads. So I spent like five hundred, five hundred fifty dollars on seventy aged leads. I guess you call them. We call them bonus leads and oh, two two dollars. Bonus $1. is a, that's a better way of putting it. Bonus leads, yeah, because they've already worked. My, right. Some of these work two or three or four times. Some one time, or two times. And I called through seventy of them. And book three appointments. I, 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 I mean, call through seventy of them like one time. I like double dialed, triple dial, call from different phone numbers. I got a hold of probably forty five of those and booked three appointments. Oh my! Right. So I called Brad up. And my first question was, "Can I buy one more leads?" And he goes, "Why?" I said, "Because I suck on the phone. I know it's eventually I just need to get better." And we role play on the phone, and then I got back on the phone and I booked six more appointments, like in two hours. Mm. He's like, dude, you gotta slow down. You know, I'm in Texas too, right? You know, yeah. one lady on the phone, she's like, "Sir, could you slow down, please?" I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna kill." So dialing has never been exciting for me. I don't like to dial. No, but you now you're. It's a necessary. Really evil. good on the phone. Yeah, but I want I mean, to. I want to shoot myself when I'm on yeah. there. Sometimes you're good. <laughs> I'm with you. Slow, low and slow was the key, right? That's low right. Low and slow. Low, slow, and controlled, right? Right. Um, and so again, I. I you know, you, you build me up this great guy. I mean, because of the support structure and, 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 and if you're in it in the insurance industry, it's important to have mentors and have a good support structure. I was an overpaid Uber driver. And what I mean by that, I went from one appointment to the next appointment and I literally had five people. I had Matt, Brad, Edward, uh, Paul Honeycutt, another person on the phone, on speed dial. And I literally would call from the home. Now, I want to suggest that because you want to learn some stuff, but I needed yeah. to make money right away, right? And I had 30 people I recruited in licensing Whew. before I got my license. Marlon was already licensed. We started bringing yeah, yeah. people. We took those nine people. I looked, took the things that I learned about recruiting, which we're going to talk about on a webinar later tonight. And I took that those nine people, turned it into 30, and eventually turned it into 69. So I had 30 people in licensing. And I backed myself in a corner, which I talked about earlier, which is key. I couldn't afford not to make it work. Yeah, yeah. Because now I had 30 eyes on me. I had 30 people look at me like, what's Nate going to do? I had Marlon Fuck Faulkner looking at me going, what's Nate going to do? Mm-hmm. And my ego, which this is where it's healthy, <laughs> goes, I ain't going to fail. I know that. That's right. So can I buy more leads? <laughs> you know? And so, like, I literally, I mean, I wrote $15,000 in APV my first week. But, like, it, it wasn't because I'm impressive. It's just I, I knew people. And, and I, I was dumb. Did you even know how to run an appointment? No. I, I mean, they, they have a script. And they had a, a, a you know, I went to a, a, their, their do, to boot camp. And they taught me. So, yeah, I mean, I knew how to run the appointment. But I just didn't. I mean, I was clueless. They had paper applications. I remember I called Brad from the home one time and I'm sitting there and 
And, and I had this whole thing down where I'd say, hey, listen, you know, we work with 35 different carriers. We have access to 400 products. It's impossible for me to keep up with all the different changes they made. I mean, it looks like they just changed the application. They're trying to make this easier on us, you know, and it's actually harder. So let, let me, I have a good friend of mine in the, in, in the um, a marketing department. Let me just call him real quick. He gave me the cell number. I just want to make sure I don't write the wrong thing down because I don't think you want me to have to come back to the house and get another signature from you guys, right? Okay, great. So I'm on the phone. I'm like, hey, you know, Brad, I'm sitting here with Sally and Bob, and that wasn't their names, but. And right underneath their address, there's a line right here. I just want to make sure it said there, Social Security. And, and, and right there it says DL. What do I put there? And he goes, driver's license. This <laughs> is my first appointment. <laughs> swear, swear. I said, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, great. That's what I thought. Hey, thanks, Brad. Appreciate it. You know, And I skipped to the next line, and I came back because I felt so dumb. Yeah, you didn't want to just go, Hey, can I have your driver's license, please? They're going to be like, dude, this guy's an idiot. Um, and so it was just massive. I was taught massive action, constant correction, massive action, constant correction. And then, you know, that's what the company taught me. And then they also, my mentor in my back of the mirror, if you had to go out and make $10,000 and I said, you had to make 10,000 mistakes before you make $10,000, how quickly would you make them? So, you know, I was, I was that guy, you know, light yourself on fire and people will come watch you burn, you know? So, I mean, it, it was, uh, just hustling and getting on the phone and making sure I had the appointments and, you know, a lot of people work two or three days a week in the field. That's great. I was working, you know, I wasn't that, I mean, I was working six, seven days. Whenever I could get an appointment, I was running it because mm. I needed to make money. And I, I wanted to be at a point where, where, you know, I could make that money. Did you still work at your other job as well? It wasn't a job. It I mean, career or whatever, company. but yeah, yeah. Did you stay? You, I, I, after my first, I mean, when I had $40,000 deposit in my bank account within two weeks, I pretty much just, that was gone. Left. Yeah. I mean, I still kind of had some customers and stuff, but I mean, it was like, I was like, here's an opportunity. Do, do you still make money from that? No, it, it's 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 very it's very tough to uh, these days with the different things to be able to continue to make yeah. money on it and stuff. But, but uh, eighty five k in six weeks, and you didn't even know what DL meant on a on an application. <laughs> well, that, I can't help that I was dumb, but <laughs> you know, what I'm saying. Hey, there's hope. There's hope, right? If there's Dude, hope. Like, there, there's definitely hope. But I had a good support staff, uh, a good support team around me, and a great company I was working with, and great resources. And yes, and, and I turned my car into a rolling university. And I think I learned from my mentor, where it was like Dude. when I was on a way to an appointment, I was listening to. Here's what I learned. They said, you know, successful, and this is what's so funny. You don't have to be smart to be successful. You just gotta be a good cheater, and I don't mm. mean that in a negative way. You just gotta find someone who's having success. And if the words, what's that movie? I can't hear the words coming out of your mouth. But if the words that come out of your mouth are the words that come out of the mouth of the person that's successful, like I've never cold called. And don't put me up to this if I don't want to do it. But I know you do cold call trainings. I firmly believe if I studied you and listened to you and had your script on cold call training, I listened to you over and over and over again. And the words that you say come out of my mouth that I could book appointments dialing through a list like you do on cold a call. A phone book. You literally could. I could. If I was disciplined to do it. Yeah. And so like there wasn't any more TV. There wasn't any more golf. There wasn't any more football. I didn't watch football for three and a half years and football is my favorite sport. But it's like I wanted to have the success that I wanted to have and I was willing to give up mm. the things that were important to me to get the success that I wanted to have. And then and, and so many people are not willing to do that. And, and that's why I truly believe a lot of them won't reach those higher levels because they don't, you know, want to give up what they have to get what they want. You think you can? You think you can train anyone to make quarter mil, half a million bucks a year? Don't you? Anyone? No. Anyone mm. who wants to and has commitment? Yes. And that's the big difference. That's good. That's good. Not anyone. That's good because I set you up to to agree with me, but I like that you're like, dude. I no. I, if they don't want to, I can't. I, I can't. I you know I can't train someone that, that doesn't have commitment. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. If you had to look back over the last 13 years and you had to think of one aha moment that really maybe shifted things for you, right? Got your attention, made you change something, and, and, and it really 